Taji. This is Goddess Talk. Today is a beautiful Thursday. Yes, ma'am. And I got my wonderful guest, Mr. Melvin Duncan. What's up? What's up? <laughs> so, Melvin. Jersey crew. <laughs> me and Melvin have known each other, I'll say about three years or so. Yeah, right about now. three years. It's about three years. So, uh, you were the one who took all my original pictures. I've never had pictures taken before. Uh, you were the first person that I got pictures taken with, and it was like I always came back to you. Yeah. And then it was so funny this past what two or three weeks yeah. ago, I was looking for a, uh, a videographer, yeah. and I forgot you did videos also. And somebody sent me your name, but they said Melvin, yeah, and then they yeah. click in my head. Yeah. I was like, yeah, Melvin. I was like, okay, sure, like, whatever. Right, right, yeah. Right. So he was <laughs> like, call him right now. So I yeah. went to dial the number. I was like. Yeah, I was like, I'm a beat too. Yeah, you said you were a beat. I was, he was, I was like, I didn't know you did videography. I thought yeah, it was right. just straight photography. So Melvin Duncan Photos is your company. Yes, ma'am. And how long have you been doing that? Um, I've been doing uh, Melvin Duncan Photos for about um, roughly nine years now. Okay, just stay close to the oh. mic so everybody really hears it as clearly as possible. So nine years. Yeah, so roughly about nine years I've been doing uh, Melvin Duncan Photos. Um, I've been in and out of transition for a long time. Went from Tenacious Images to PDS. P it was started out with P2 EDS, which is like Page 2 Entertainment. Uh -huh. I went from DJing to doing photos. Mm -hmm. So I left the, 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 the DJ booth. Um, yeah, yeah. And to doing photography. Uh -huh. So I took that with me and went from P2 EDS, you know, um, to doing digital images mm -hmm. into um, Tenacious Images. And then um, from Tenacious Images to me. Photos. All this transition, basically trying to brand myself okay. and trying to be able to um, create a, a name for, for me. It sounds like you have a versatile portfolio. Yes. All right. So you've ba basically been in the entertainment side of things for yes, the most for part. Very long time. Um, so as far as DJing, uh, now that you said that, <laughs> that goes back to our conversation because uh, yeah. we both from Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up? And that's how we probably clicked because it was like, yeah. I I'm from Jersey. He's like. What? Me yeah, too. Exactly. So what part of Jersey you grew up? Uh, well, it's, it's, I moved around. Uh -huh. I started off in Plainfield, New Jersey. Okay. I went from Plainfield, New Jersey to, where we went after that? Uh, Irvington. Okay. And from Irvington to East the Orange. North. Oh, you stayed in the North. Yeah. North. Oranges. Essex, Essex County. Essex yeah, basically. Union. Yeah. Yeah, from we er to East Orange Union. Yeah, and then to North. Hudson County. <laughs> That's how, that was all those three counties right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I grew up in the South, but I always was in North. Oh, okay. uh, for our church was in North on Broad Street, so I was there gotcha. my whole life. So I basically kind of grew up in North. Oh, yeah. oh I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Plainfield, Irvington, all my cousins were there. Uh, what was the other place that everybody was at? I had cousins um, who were in South Orange, West Orange. Yeah. Uh, we had everybody everywhere up North. Um, but... How did you transition? Because the music and entertainment and DJing back in the day, when we partied up north, it was a it was a whole situation. Yeah, I mean, I was more in, into the house scene, house club music. So oh, so you was in soca and calypso. I did, I did that too, reggae. but it was it the soca and the calypso. Even in that environment uh -huh. was like you know it was, rough. Yeah, it, it was, was rough. It was, but that was the best party. It was. I love the house music. I mean, yeah, being with your peoples is good. Yeah. But you know how your peoples are too. They get angry. My, they no, get rowdy. My peoples was good. My peoples was angry and, and rowdy. Well, you so. you originally from Trinidad, right? Yes, originally from it's Trinidad. Trinidad. Trinidad and Tobago. So yes. tell us a little bit about that because I love Trinidad. I'm still trying to get to uh, Carnival. I'm going 2020. Uh, I am going to be at Carnival this year. Um. Trinidad, Trinidad is good. Right now it's rough. Uh -huh. Right now it's really, really tough. Yeah. My mom and my sister just came back from Trinidad. Okay. And they told me about it and stuff like that. And um, I mean, when we grew up in the 80s, it was cool, you mm -hmm. know, your kids and stuff, and growing around and stuff. But, you know, as it, get, uh, it got older, we moved up here, transitioned mm -hmm. up here, mm -hmm. you know, the crime rate got increased. Mm -hmm. You know, just like any other, you know, third world country, yeah. whatever. When you don't have, people take, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it kind of, it kind of got from that point that point of where you know it got really really rough for murders mm -hmm. every day every day and it got really really rough. Really okay. Rough. So right now, I mean, to you to go back for carnival, everybody love it. It's yeah. jumping. Tourism is awesome. Yeah. It's great. But you go inland. Yeah. You gonna get yourself in some trouble. Okay. So. So just know where you're going and who you're yeah, with. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So um, with 
Trinidad because I love oh my god my favorite one of my favorite two of my favorite artists Michelle Montano oh okay and Destra okay and <laughs> okay and I told you for my birthday when we was in New York yeah. I saw Destra and I was yeah. just like everybody <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was jumping you couldn't tell me nothing that's my favorite Man. artist um but how has that been transitioning from there to here because it is a different lifestyle between the two cultures and the two countries let's say that much I mean it was it was easy in a sense because I grew up in a Christian background mm -hmm. so you know having those godly morals kind of help you understand um you know the nature around you first okay. of all you know because you can grow up in you could be i well we were actually in any environment mm -hmm. so we we were living in the in the, the rural areas mm -hmm. and then you know we went to the hood mm -hmm. and then we got from the hood and i'll tell you another story about mm -hmm. that but that's another, <laughs> that's another time <laughs> <laughs> no we got some stories i got a lot of stories but um but um you know from going from that to um, being uh, on your own individual mm -hmm. and knowing, you know, how to manage yourself around certain aspects of, of areas that you move to. I mean, having that, to me, having the, the, the background of, of coming from a third world country and then going to coming to America, it it allows you to not only appreciate for, you know, the things around you, but you can actually, you know, kind of manage yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could be in an, in an area and environment, and we're not scared. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid, you know. It's I tell people like <laughs> I have no problem. I don't like to be in certain situations, right? But if I find myself there, it is what it is. It is like what it is, right? I and know so other important. situations I exactly. could have been in from back home. I tell people that all the time. Like I'm down here, and they're like, "Oh yeah, yo man, you been to that hood?" I'm like, "Look, you got to go to North." If and you I in love North, North. Jersey, I love North. And you, I'm trying to tell you, my man Vaz is on here watching. But What's up? Uh, the thing about it is, if you're in North New Jersey, is rough. It's it's tough, it man. I mean, it's like people tell me, it's like they're from Chicago and stuff like that. It's crazy. I never been there, but I don't want to go there. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna put myself in that environment. But however, if I should be, if there. I should be there, I know I'd handle myself. And that's the thing, because I love North. Like I said, we went there. If not, if I grew up in the church, and we were there. If not, three, four days a week. Right. So every other day, if right. not every day of the week, exactly. we were in North, and we're coming from South Jersey. Right. So we were driving at least an hour to hour, hour fifteen. Yeah. And it was it was real and. I loved it. Like we be, we go to the bodega, to the corner store. Yo, poppy, let me get a cheesesteak yeah, or whatever. Exactly. Like I was cool. It's cool. The one time my little brother, he ain't know no better. He just wanted to go get some candy at the right. store. Went to the store. We usually go with him. He went yeah. to the store, picked the candy, and walked right out. Came back to the store, and everyone's like, "Hold up, where'd you get that from?" <laughs> so we walked back. Like, yo, poppy, you know he didn't mean to. He's like, right. "No, no, 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 no." He knew we were right. gonna come back. Exactly. So and but mind you. Other times we would hear stories of people getting shot and stuff. It was like, hold up, on this street? That's right. So it was like, it was really weird because we also grew up in South Jersey right. in a very, you know, suburban area right. as well. And it was like, those two dynamics, it was like, I moved either way. I was very fluid, let's just right. say that much. Exactly. All right, so now photography, how did you get into that? Um, wow. Well, like I said, I transitioned from DJ and mm -hmm. I always had a fan. I always had... I love for photography mm -hmm. because I was once a model mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, I did you know some runway shows and stuff like that. And you know, my sister was always telling me, she's like, "You always do like the always a person who always like do the most. Mm -hmm. Like you go above and beyond. You know, what I'm saying like you extra. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> <She's extra. laughs> she's like you know, you you take chances. You know, what I'm saying like we can't yeah. take the chances you take. Yeah. You know, but you, and that's what I did. I mean. It was. I remember I was sitting in the office. I was working at my aunt's um, doctor's office, and this one lady who was a, was a patient. Mm -hmm. uh, she came and she said, "Hey, we got a um, we got a, a, a event coming up. You want to be a part of it?" Yeah. I was like, "Yeah." So I didn't know no better. I was like, "I just went. Sure, yeah. I, I, didn't, I wasn't planning to be a model. Yeah. I just wanted to go to the event." And then I was like, "Yeah, you got to sell tickets, blah blah blah. You know the, the yeah. usual thing." Sell so, you so something. I, get yeah, on. exactly. So I sold myself some tickets, and now I was like, "Wow!" I started walking. Oh. I was like, wow, I like this, mm -hmm. you know. Got myself a suit, you know, went up the wall. People was like, boom, I want you. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and it went from there, you know. And um, from that, um, you know, I kind of took that. And I was like, you know what, I, I think I need to, to get myself a yeah, yeah, pursuit. But it, it didn't come until my brother. Uh -huh. my, all my brothers, they shoot. Uh -huh. Like, my oldest brother. Okay. Was, uh, so all y'all in Yeah, we all in uh -huh. So it was 2010, and, um, and my brother was like, hey, why don't you get a camera and start shooting? Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me let me do that. Yeah. You know, when I got a camera, you know, I just started shooting. And it wasn't the best at first. Of course. I had to develop myself, yeah. but you know, I still had the angles. I still knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted out of an image, you know, and I just started to basically put the creativity into it. So, do you think your modeling 
assisted you and helped you with that eye for photography oh, because absolutely. as a model you know how you know with your yeah. angles yeah, as a model yeah, yeah, exactly. and it's like i want to be shot that way so exactly. do you think that helped you as a photographer like i know this model would like this look specifically absolutely i okay. think that that um being having the opportunity to basically be a model mm -hmm. um help me guide and coach the models that i have today okay you know being able to show them different poses different posture being able to be patient as well mm -hmm. because some of them doesn't Understand because they either brand new to it, yeah. so they don't really understand what you're saying. Mm. So you have to be able to have that patience mm. to be able to say, okay, well, no, I don't want it that way. Well, why don't you try it this okay. way? And why don't you do this thing? You know, so that it, you can get the best image possible. Okay. So now you started that in 2010 or so. Yeah. So how did you transition from Jersey to Tampa, or well, just Florida in general? To, uh, well, from Jersey to Tampa was it was like a luck a mm -hmm. draw okay. because I was looking for my Verizon wireless at the time okay. and the boy uh, Doc DJ Doc hey <laughs> yeah. he's down here too nah he went back oh, <laughs> no, look there's people yeah. who don't make it down here nah, I was, was I've been a couple times like man I'm ready to go back right, right, right. <laughs> but um, no nah, he um, the, uh, Doc came down here well he first of all we got the transition because our company Verizon wireless at the time closed mm -hmm. okay. in New Jersey Morristown New Jersey and they oh, gave everybody yeah. a service back yes, 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 remember, remember that time right so they gave everybody a service back. It's like, okay, well, you, you could actually do this. You could go to, to South Carolina, because everybody was moving there, was moving a big enough yeah. uh, building, uh, a call center down there. Yeah. So it was like, okay, you can go to South Carolina, South Carolina or you can actually um, uh, uh, file for an interview to any other call center, you know, that is for Rise Okay. So they had a call center in Hillsborough, okay. so my boy was like, okay, well, we want to go to Florida. Yeah. You know, because we don't want to deal with the snow no more. And then you and want to ride bikes. And then, <laughs> so, yeah, you want to ride bikes. Yeah. And y'all want to be young and free. And yeah, free. exactly. So, you yeah. want to show your old oats. <laughs> hey. Is that what you're trying to do, Melvin? Okay, Whatever. cool. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, so we, you know, I, you know, if I fit the position, we'll have a position. Okay. And so you started also doing photography and DJing down here? Just uh, No, I started doing photography down here. Okay. Yeah. So nobody in Texas has ever experienced a DJ. What was your name? No, I did. Oh, I still a DJ sometimes. What was um, your name? My name is DJ Knock. N O K K one. DJ Knock one. Okay, cool. So now, um, with your portfolio with uh, photography, uh, just tell us your range because a lot of people, you know, unfortunately we see some people that photography they do like Instagram models only, mm -hmm. or they do just scenic landscapes. So, um, or depending high fashion or other, what what do you do? What is what is Melvin Duncan photos about? I I used to do just models, mm -hmm. just fashion models, mm -hmm. the case would be, you know, um, glamour models, whatever. But now recently I've more expanded my portfolio. Mm -hmm. So now I'm doing real real estate, okay. realty, and Okay. videos etc okay. so kind of expand okay. on that behalf so it's not just you know um, you're not one box right yeah. exactly so i can bas basically plant myself in different areas mm -hmm. so i'm available for whatever is needed yeah because the videography was the thing that i didn't realize that you did right, right. so you've been doing that and so tell us how that's been going because if we need a videographer right. melvin duncan can also do it so tell absolutely, us a little bit about absolutely. that um it's good i mean the video doing the video etc it, 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 it's to me, it's easier than mm -hmm. photography. Okay. You know, people were like, okay, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, the thing is, with the video, you only have, well, unless you're actually doing an actual uh, uh, shoot and you, mm -hmm. you have a script and yeah. things right now, mm -hmm. you do it X amount of time yeah. to get it right. Yeah. But to me, it's like you get one chance to basically create something. Mm -hmm. And when you go behind, you sit behind the tools to actually create and put it together, mm -hmm. you know, you're creating a story. Yeah. You know, and, and each scene, is a is a creation of your thought process mm. or your heart. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of puts everything together. Okay. And then when it comes to compile it, it looks amazing. Yeah. It's like wow. You know. So I love videography. Okay. I love cinematography. Okay. So anybody needs to reach out to Melvin, they can number one call us right now eight one three four 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 nine five eight eight on In Touch News. But they can also check you out on Instagram, Facebook, yes, Melvin Duncan Photos. Photos. All right, so we'll be right back. This is Goddess Talk with Balaji on In Touch News. Cool. All right, so now we're gonna get into the other shit, the other stuff. <laughs> because uh, I, I want to talk about that stuff because we had a great conversation. Yeah. That, I think like the photo shoot, like other than you know, you take my pictures. Yeah. Um, we were really talking about some real stuff. Right. I was like, man, 
I gotta keep this conversation going because I like the male perspective on a lot of different things. Yeah. Because a lot of people, I feel like they want to talk about certain things, but they're so stuck in their own yeah, way of yeah, doing exactly, things exactly. that they don't listen to the other perspective. Like I can listen to it, but it's like I still feel this type of way. But let exactly. me see how you might change my view on it. Right, 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 exactly. So let's see. Yeah. Hey, y'all. What's up, y'all? You know you have some trolls online. I know. So, because my my uh, Afroganist page has like fifteen thousand or certain people on there, so some of them are just following just to troll people. Just to troll. And this guy put Z's on there, and I'm like, okay, you can, you can unfollow, and you can just shut down. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever. I don't think I've really ever paid attention to any of those comments before. Probably the first negative comment I've ever seen. Really? Like I've seen some negative ones in regular comments, yeah. like pictures and stuff. But not on a video that like I'm really doing live, like blockage. Because I'm good for that too. I like to it's whatever. It's all good. Hello, hey Auntie. That's my aunt. What's up? How you doing? Welcome back, welcome back. This is Goddess Talk with Balaji and our guest Melvin Duncan. What's up, Melvin? What's up? What's up? What's up? So, um, <clears throat> we got through your pictures. Um, I'm sorry, your business is Melvin Duncan Photos, um, where you also do videography. So, how can people find you? Shout out your information real quick. Okay, I actually have a bunch of them. Oh, okay, so <laughs> run through it real quick. I'm going to sit back and let you know. Right, so, that. Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram and, um, and Facebook, Melvin Duncan Photos. You can also follow me um, on um, uh, Tenacious uh, Studios uh, and Instagram also. Mm -hmm. And I also have a fashion magazine, Fox F O X E. MNG and uh, Instagram also. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We're going to talk about the, the, the magazine that yeah, you're putting out. Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. Nah. Let's talk about that because, like I said, I always give you all a platform to drop all your yes, stuff. So, what's, yes, the, what's the magazine about? So, the magazine basically, I kind of stretched out from when I first started my magazine. This was back in 2013, mm -hmm. I believe. I actually started that because I wanted, I actually sent out my images to this magazine. I think it's from North, mm -hmm. New York. Elements. Mm -hmm. A lot of photographers just submit this stuff, mm -hmm. and they do take it. And I got a chance to be in there. And when I got a chance, and I got the magazine mm -hmm. at home, I was like, man, I could do this. Yeah. You know. And I was like, man, let me put this together. Yeah. See what happened? And it was called Revised Magazine mm -hmm. when I first started. <clears throat> it was called Revised Magazine. Okay. And I started doing like you know fashion trends, etc. You know, to so get into some of the networks that was in fashion in Tampa. Okay. I met a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. Some people I still are best friends with today. Okay. That are models that were in the magazine, okay. etc. And then as I transitioned, I started getting artistic, started getting better. Yeah. I wanted something different. Okay. So I created Fox Magazine. Okay. Fox Magazine is basically an, an extension of that, but it actually allows um, both fashion and artistic to okay. get into that realm okay. together. And I say artistic because I can create anything or other photographers can create and submit okay. their images in to whatever you. fashion to me. Okay. And, you know, <clears throat> but Fox Magazine actually came about this one of my friends right here, Paul Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it's Dana Cole. She okay. is in Norway. Okay. Okay. She actually had um, her magazine, Cole Magazine. Okay. She inspired me okay. to actually change to make that transition. Okay. Like, and I love the way the format of the uh, magazine was, and uh, it is rather than okay. was, and, um, I kind of like you know model that format. Okay. And so is this online or is this physically? You get to it's copy. Both, okay. Physical, okay. Okay. Both online. And online. All right, so shout out that website. How can, <coughs> how can anybody get it? Is it is it released on a weekly, monthly? It's right basis? now. It's, right now, I'm trying to get it stable. Okay. It's, it was actually twice a year. Okay. But now I'm trying to do it every three months. Okay. So, so the next, yeah, the next one will be coming out. Hopefully, at the end of the month. I'm okay. To, yeah, because we were talking about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's crunch time right now. Okay. But I have so much you know client work I have to do. I don't know if I will be able to release it or not. So okay. That's what I'm really quiet about it. Okay, yeah, but if but we were ready yeah. to order it, you'll yeah. share that link and I'll share it to other Yeah, people. absolutely. All right, cool. So, um, while Melvin was taking my pictures, because I decided to finally do some, you know, some new pics for Guys yeah. Talk. So, uh, funny enough, Melvin was like, yo, let's do it. And Melvin has his own studio in Tampa as well. Yes. yes people can roll up to it. And yeah. Tenacious Studios, yes. And so we, because we had history where it was like, yo, we just started talking. Yeah. And some of the topics that we're talking about, I was like, yo, <clears throat> 
we definitely got to keep this conversation going on guys talk so one of the things that we were talking about um because you being from trinidad my family's nigerian we were talking about how people from back home always swear we're balling right. over here right. not knowing how hard it is to come here literally start sometimes at a negative yes. to create any kind of wealth or anything here and we're talking about how, you know, people back home may, you know, call you about different things, money and different things. Or people just say, oh, yeah, I want to come to America. I want to come to America. It's like, yo, you might want to stay back there right. because when you get over here, it's hard. So talk about that experience because, again, you did come from over there to here. And how has it really telling people like, yo, it's not as easy as you think it is over there? Right. I think, in essence, you know, when people are in a different spot, for example, if you have someone come from New York, you know, where New York prices for a one bedroom apartment is like, you know, fifteen hundred dollars. Almost two grand. You know, almost two grand. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's not like two grand and you're getting a loft. No. It's like two grand you're getting a box. Yeah. <laughs> you and know no what utilities. Saying? Right, you no know, utilities exactly, you gotta pay on top of that. Yeah. So you 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 have someone that's coming from a different country mm -hmm. and they're coming over to the US because they hear this kind of free yeah. little break. They see stuff they on see the media. Yeah, social things media. on social media. And it's attractive to mm -hmm. them, so they want to come over here. Yeah. But not understanding that you have to beat the pavement. Yeah. You gotta work, mm -hmm. you know. And say so yes, you gotta work over there too, and they don't pay as much because yeah. you're working hard labor. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. But when you're over here, you work the hard labor and you get barely anything. Very and then another thing <coughs> that I noticed is that you know, a lot of us over here, not you or me, we are frauds to people on social media and in the news just right. projecting this wealth and right. all this stuff that we truly do not have. Right. Because a lot of people, we know a lot of people who get into the fraudulent, you know, yeah. workforce yeah. itself. Um, but one thing I really was, I guess, apprehensive about is that a lot of people see certain things. They see the clothes, the jewelry and stuff like that. They don't understand, especially if you have a degree back home, yeah. your degree might not transition over no. here. So whatever st status or status you have back home, you may not get it here. Right. And so you think, oh, I got a, a master's in this, but you might have a master's and then come over here and it's like, all right, well, you still got to work as a CNA exactly. to start working back yeah. up to yeah. and get another degree and go through school and all Absolutely. that stuff. And a lot of people don't know that. And the thing about it is like, even with classes, mm -hmm. like let's say for this kids come up here, yeah. you know, you're in your high school and they think that basically you're Said your yeah. degree or your yeah. transcripts will transfer over, but it doesn't. But even though the, the uh, other countries they have a higher standard of yeah. earning, yeah, they know, do. We in the, in, in the West Indies we have a way higher standard of learning. So Everybody what we learn does. in the sixth grade yes. is what they learn in the ninth to the yeah. tenth grade. Yeah, you know, because when I first got here, I got here when I was seven, <coughs> right? right? And um, back home, I think I was like finished like fifth grade yeah. or something, but they put me in second grade over yeah. here. And then it was like, my mom was like, uh, she definitely is right. more advanced than this. But then my sister, she was opposite where she was really supposed to be in uh, maybe preschool. Yeah. But they put her in like kindergarten, first grade, like right away. So she actually got skipped up because right. she was so advanced. It was like, we can't keep her out. Right. So it was like, I was in my technically correct grade because right. of my age. Right. But um, I was more advanced than the age I was exactly. here. And so you do see that difference of the standard of education overseas is different. Yes. Um, and do you feel like the standard overseas is also stricter and it's more, strict, more praise than over here? I wouldn't say praise. I say it was. It's more, it's needed. Mm -hmm. It's needed because I think that if a lot of people had the understanding of how the British did mm -hmm. it, because that's where it came from, it came from British structure. Yeah. You know, so if they basically had an understanding of how they were actually taught that maybe things would be different, yeah. you know what I'm saying, versus you, you know, the way people think, yeah. I don't know. For me, I know when I came over here, I was in the sixth grade, mm -hmm. I remember this distinctly, I was in the sixth grade, and I was learning stuff, like I said, I yeah. was in the ninth grade, yeah. I would answer that, I scored high yeah. on the test that they gave us, but because of my age, mm -hmm. they kept us yeah. back. Yeah. But it got so boring, mm -hmm. and literally, it was boring in class, okay. that I, I started acting up. So do you think that the stuff that you were learning overseas was more engaging to you yeah, than over here? Because it was challenging. Okay. It was something that you never learned before. Okay. And to us, it, you know, being a kid in, let's say, the fourth grade, you know, understanding what the, the seventh graders and the mm -hmm. eighth graders would do, 
it was like, wow. Yeah. It was eye opening. When we came over here, it was like, I did that already. Yeah. And you're trying to tell the teacher that you did that, but yeah. they're like, shut up, don't say that. Da, da, da. I had that. So now it's like, talk too much. You yeah, you talk, talk too much. Back. I know, I, I just know it all. Exactly. Yeah. So I literally had to dumb myself down. I felt that way. So I can be able to be part of the clique. Yeah. We got jumped. I mean, me and my sister yeah. got jumped by the entire school. Oh. 150 kids mm. followed me and my sister home. That is another topic. But yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, because because of them not understanding who we were yeah. and understanding how intelligent we were, yeah. they put us in a class where we didn't need to be in. Mm-hmm. It caught, it, it gave us or that, that opportunity for people to basically, you know, abuse us in that sense. Okay, and so that's why you were in Plainfield, right? Yes. At that time. And my cousin mm-hmm. grew up in Plainfield, so I know Plainfield very well. Right. Um, was it black kids who jumped y'all or oh, was it white kids? No, it was black kids. It was black kids. And so this is another topic that I always want to talk about, about uh-huh. the issues between um, supposedly us and them. But we're not understanding that it was ingrained in us as kids to hate each other versus growing together, loving each other. Because if my brother from overseas comes, even though we're not related, but you come in, I should embrace you. But what I've been taught over here is like, man, F that. You know, they just come in here to steal our jobs and, you know, African booty yes. scratch and all those jokes yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I but it's, too. yeah, I, I got all those things. Yeah. And it's like, I really could have had a lot more hate in my heart than I do. Right. But I didn't because it's like, yo, we all look the same. We all literally same phenotypes and everything, but unfortunately the history in this country has taught us to hate one another. And another thing you mentioned, you um, Trinidad was um, British colonized, right? Right. And so was Nigeria. And you know you have French colonized other countries and everything. Um, But with the education system of the British, you know, because we were still, we're still colonized by the British, even though we want to say like we have our independence or whatever, yeah. mentally and everything, yeah. those countries because are still colonized. Yes. And, they, and, they kind of yes. Yeah. and so now, um, and then you know America's history with the British, where it's like, uh uh-uh, uh, we don't do all that. We have right. our own education right, right, system right. and everything. So now it's like really bridging the gap, I feel. That's the issue that I see with us. Do you feel like kids coming from Trinidad or Nigeria in this day and age have it? maybe a little bit better than we did growing up or you think it's still probably the same but not worse? I think that they probably have a little bit better because mm-hmm. now they kind of, since situations happened within the last couple of years, a lot of people have been reaching out to African countries. And Caribbean. Everybody want to go. Everybody want to go. Exactly. So it's a lot easier for them to come over yeah. now yeah. than yeah. it was when we came over. Yeah. Okay. Because when we came over, they had no idea. They didn't know where Trinidad was. It wasn't on the map. And it was like, you got an accent, yeah. you Haitian. Yeah. You got an accent, you African. You Jamaican. You got an accent, you yeah. different. Where you from, yeah. So they didn't accept us mm-hmm. for being a different. And I was excited. I was like, wow, I'm in America. I'm like, yeah. hey, how you doing? Because we we saw what was on TV. Yeah. And what was on TV was like, everybody's happy. Yeah. Everybody's joyful. Jokes. Everybody's, yeah. Jokes. But as soon as I came over here, it was like, do a, you know, I'm sitting in the lunchroom and I get a tray thrown in my face. Yeah. You know, I get somebody beat me over the yeah. head. You know, my sister getting jumped. Yeah. I'm getting jumped, you know. And so we had to learn to defend ourselves. Yeah. And I was like crazy. I'm like, yeah, we didn't come over here for this. Yeah. You know, and my mom, my dad, bless their they didn't know because they just came my over here. My parents didn't know. Yeah, they just, you know, looking for a better Land of opportunity. Land and opportunity. this and this and that. Right. like, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we went through. Yeah, exactly. I felt miserable growing up. I was like, man, it's why are you right? I'll yeah. tell you, but you know what? We had that opportunity, like I said, to kind of build ourselves mm-hmm. and to understand, you know, the elements of life. Yeah. You know, because we didn't have nobody to teach us. We had to learn for ourselves. Yeah, so we had to adapt yeah. to those environments okay. wherever we got put in. Okay. All right, cool. So we're about to take another break. Okay. Um. This is Melvin Duncan, Melvin Duncan Studios. I'm here on Goddess Talk, where I test news. If you want to call in, 813-444-9588. We'll be back. Yo, man, I was miserable growing up. I was like, man, I'm fucking here, everybody. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I was so through, but it was like... The blue water. Yes. Send you 16 votes. Okay, you can you tell me if you really want the case. So you do want a case? Yeah. All right, so do I bring a case for you every week or what? At, at, at least bring me one. Like, get me started. Okay. Let me get started. So, so guys, tomorrow's what, Friday? Check out this water, man. This water is Black on, y'all. Black on. <laughs> yeah, blue water. If you need it, blue. contact you me. Cash. I do have cash now. This water is 16 bucks, right? Yes, I got you for 16 
if you wanted to ship to you, it'd be a little bit. Pat, what's going on, Pat? Just bring it in next time. I will. I got you. And I was thinking about it too, but I was like, nah, he wasn't really serious about the war. But now I know. You keep doing all this advertising. Look, I'll be dropping it, you know? Shit. I'll be dropping y'all too. I'll be advertising in touch. You know, has your following got up? You know, since that was You know, you, you get some looks on Instagram. I'm just saying, on Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm a G. I, you know, I talk the talk, but I walk the walk too. <laughs> what up, Alex? What up, fam? What up, what up, what up? I will be seeing you um, in Vegas in a couple weeks. Yeah. We got a lot of different projects coming out, y'all. Yeah. I got a lot of different projects coming out. I need to. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope that you're enjoying the show. <laughs> All right, you guys, you guys have any, ish, any uh, questions or whatever? Eight. 813 444 and you can check it on intouchnews.com. And touch. Hey y'all, this is Goddess Talk with Balaji. We are back. Yeah, yeah. With Melvin Duncan. What's up, Melvin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it do? What it do? What's up? <laughs> All right. So, um, another discussion, another thing that we were talking about while you were taking my pictures, and those pictures, I haven't seen all of them yet, but they're tight. So when I start dropping those pictures, oh, oh, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. when Melvin says me those pictures, yo, I don't want nobody talking to me. I'm going to flex. Yeah. I will be flexing because no, Melvin had me feeling like a real model. I was like, I was in there. I was over here walking. He did a little video. He did a yeah, video yeah, too. He's putting that together. Put so up. he's actually gonna help us do another flyer for that stuff, huh? Did you change? I did. Yeah. I actually wore three my times. goddess. I, I did three changes. So I had um, goddess talk. Uh, my black shirt that I have on today. It's the first time I've ever worn it, actually. Yeah. If y'all see it, um, my girl Tiffany um, in New York, uh, in Jersey. Sorry, she printed this for me. Did it all. So I'm giving her a shout out. So once he gives us official yeah. pictures, um, definitely gonna promote it for her. Oh, um, but she, yo, she put this shirt together, and I was so impressed with it. Like, I told her exactly what I had in mind, Vision, yeah. and she made it happen. I was like. <gasps> Yo, you, you see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she put it together, had the back with the logo, yeah, everything nice. like, nah, nice. Tiffany did a great job with that. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, I'm going to send you, you're like, you going to send me that. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, shout out to Tiff, um, but shout out to you, those pictures, like, I'm just, like, ready for them. Because the one that you sent me, I was like, yeah, 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 right. Hold up, okay, I was looking nice, and I, I had a bad day that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, you made my day better, thank you. Aww. But we were talking about so many different things. Yeah. And one thing we're talking about um, was submission. Ooh. So um, I, I gotta get, I gotta get straight. For get, 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 get it right, get it right, get it right. Um, because <laughs> submission for me was always a negative connotation. Right. Because um, everybody was trying to make it seem like women had to submit. Women submit, 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 submit. It's like, hold up. What do the guys got to do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be a partnership. Like, why do I have to literally let somebody walk all over me? And again, it was a negative because yeah. of the way that it presented to me. Right. Right. Um, and then me being like, nah, I'm not with this Bible thing. I'm not with this yeah. scripture. And it's always a negative. I feel like it was very hard hitting for no reason. Um, but as I've grown older and I've understood um, that it is a duality to it, that both sides are supposed to submit to each other. Right. Um, I can appreciate it. Right. So now it was so funny. We we're talking about that yeah. two weeks ago, and then this past week, um, Fantasia, she's a singer. I guess she must have gone on Breakfast Club and talked about it, and yeah. some people were up in arms. I was like, no, nah, I don't see nothing wrong with what right. she said. Right. And then I showed you the video of what her husband yeah. said. I was like, yo, that is it's it. Point. It's a it's a song and dance, yeah. and submission is a gift yeah. to your partner. Yeah. Okay. So talk I'm about a, I'm talk a, about that. I'm gonna put it this way: a lot mm -hmm. of people may or may not understand, but I'll try to put it in a sense uh -huh. depth of understanding. Submission is only done mm. in marriage. Mm. It's not done on your boyfriend or girlfriend, mm. because he don't own you, you don't own him. Mm. When y'all guys say that yes to each other, uh -huh. he's saying yes that whatever that she actually wants, I'm going to submit myself unto mm -hmm. you. She's saying, yes, whatever he wants, I'm going to submit myself unto and you. And I disagree. Because you just said this one word, and I'm always fighting against right, ownership, right? Yeah. Because 
marriage, and I, I maybe it, I have a different look it, on it, marriage right. is marriage is a partnership, correct? Yeah, it is a partnership. So I think because I have businesses, I think of right. it as a as a business, yeah. right? As a as a merger, right? Well, you can't think of it that way, but yeah. But, but I understand. If the people reference. want to understand, understand what it really truly means, right. so if you're coming together to create a corporation, mm -hmm. you know, a, a merger of um, businesses, you know, you're bringing certain things to the table. The other person right. bringing certain things to the table, and this is what our dividends and all these things are, mm -hmm. right? And we have bylaws and all mm -hmm. these things, right? Submission is within that bylaw. Mm -hmm. What what am I allowing you to do? All right. And I'm not to say allowing, because again, it still comes with the whole control aspect, right? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do to move our empire dynasty forward? Absolutely. Right. You look at it as a, as a kingdom. Yes. Right. Yes. If you say that I'm your king, mm -hmm. and I say that you're my queen, mm -hmm. like queen kept doesn't reign over the king, mm -hmm. king doesn't reign over the queen. Mm -hmm. You guys are together. Yes. You chess. It's all chess. Right? Yes. The you queen mean, protects the king. Exactly. Yes. And the king protects the queen. As versa. Yeah. yeah exactly. So you guys have a kingdom that you got to rule. Yeah. If there's discord yeah. in the kingdom, mm -hmm. then the kingdom will do what? It falls. It, it falls, falls yes. right? Yes, yes. So if you don't have the understanding of I submit yeah. myself unto you yeah. and he submits himself unto you, then there is no there's no barriers or walls to protect you. Everybody's trying to be single yeah. within marriages. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You want to be independent. Yeah, but you can be, you can still have your independence, yes. but there's a codependency as well. But they take it, they, they, I think what it is is more like they're taking it in the wrong context. Uh, cool. And again, I think it's because I say it all the time, we've allowed European standards to affect how we have always run our households and marriages and relationships within us as black folk, mm -hmm. right? Because the European standard is this whole feminism, woman is, well, I believe in African womanism, okay? Where it's all about us as a unit, okay? It's all of us, us as a team, as a family, where as a whole, African and the diaspora, wherever, we are moving forward. But when we uh, did not allow those European standards to affect us, we were running things. But now everybody's trying to do what the white folk doing, and that's not the case. Like. Our divorce rates are crazier now. Yes, we had more marriages and everything prior um, during basically segregation and everything, right. right? During Jim Crow and everything, our marriages and our um, our just us as a people, we were probably in better states, uh, spare states as a people right. during that time. But now, what we've allowed is other people's way of doing things to affect who we are and run our families, and it's, it's running us to the ground. Right. What do you think about that? Again. I think that I can only see what happens here. Okay. It's really tough. Yeah. It's a tough answer because mm -hmm. what happens in the States mm -hmm. is different what happens in other countries. My friend brought it up. She's like, yeah. So it's like what I understand of submission is what I see my mom, my dad, mm -hmm. and my aunt, mm -hmm. and I see that all around. They're still together. Yeah. They love each other. Things are growing. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it, and mm -hmm. that's what I see. Okay. But I can't bring that here because other people have other views. So why can't you? Because that was the thing. My friend, she was like, yo, talk about how it's different back home versus yeah, here. It is. Because submission back home with my parents, I personally, growing up, I was like, man, I don't want to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I grew up here. Right. Because I was taught differently. Right. I was taught that, hey, a woman can run the house. A woman can do this. A woman can be the head. A woman, like, literally, a woman right. can do everything. She don't need a man. I don't need a man. All right. that. Right. So... When I saw what my parents' dynamic was as a kid, mentally, it was just so discord. Like, it's like, I don't want to do that because that looks very dominating and right. submissive. Like, oh, right. I don't like that dynamic. Exactly. And I'm a very strong person. Right. But as I've grown, it's like, I can still be very strong in a relationship. And the thing someone. about relationships is that it's a, it's a give and take situation. Yes, yes, yes. You can't, I can't give, 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 yeah. and don't receive. Take, yes. Or you can't give, 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 and don't receive. Yeah. It's a give it, it's a give and take situation. Yeah. So you have to be able again the word submit. Because yeah. People don't like submission. You know? But if you look at but the definition, if, yeah, yes. it's like you you have to bring it up. You I'm proud of you. Don't yeah. <laughs> you know I'm all about the definition, yeah. and etymology, and all that but stuff. Yeah. You have to be able to. It's a give and take. Like you know, I accept you for mm -hmm. who you are and the decision that you make. But this, you know, blah blah blah. blah. Mm -hmm. You know, or you vice versa. You know, you want to be able to have that relationship between both of you where 
you can you know make that decision or come to a, a meeting mm -hmm. and, and and be able to carry out whatever it is that you need to carry out as a team as a whole marriage in itself is a ministry that i tell people because mm -hmm. people are looking at you people are looking at you as a as an example how you walk I and mean, i was you know married and you know and people saw you know my wife and stuff like that and it was like Oh my gosh, I want to be just like that. I want to be just like that. Mm -hmm. You guys are amazing. Blah, blah, blah. The couple goals. I hate that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I the couple goals. That stuff. Oh my but god. But the thing about it is, is that you know you have to understand that you are always being watched, mm -hmm. no matter what. You know, and it's, and being submissive does not mean that I am dictating you, mm -hmm. dictating to you. I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you basically that you got to do it. You have to. Yeah. If you don't do this, da, 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 da. And he mentioned that the iron fist type yeah, of situation. No, and that's, that's not, not something. It. That's not submission. Because um, back to what Fantasia's husband, it's a song and dance. When you think about just how we dance, the Caribbean, right. and the African, and just the whole Latino community, yeah. it's it's a beautiful dance. A beautiful because we come together, we marinate, and we just enjoy and love one another. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I really liked how he brought that part, right? right. And then what happens with the song? You enjoy yourselves. Because now, even as a strong woman, my thing is, guess what? I don't want to be strong. I want to have somebody really to be there where I can finally let my guard down. Right. I can finally just be soft and cared for and, you know, leave those right. strong black women, this and this and that, at the door. Right. I can leave that boss hat at the door because when right. I come home, you know what? My real boss is here. That's right. And it's not a boss like he, you know, but, but it's like somebody who's taking care, care of business. Things. Yeah. Because he's being the man yes. of the because he's being your king, yes. of course you're going to treat him like a king. He's exactly. To be. And that's of course the, you're going to submit yourself up to him. And this is the thing. It's not all about finances. No. Because that's the one thing this world is all about these days. It's, oh, he got to be taking care of this. It's like, hold up. He could be taking care of you mentally. Yes. Physically, That's exactly spiritually, right. emotionally, That's exactly right. psychologically. And people think that, oh, he has to make the most money. You could be the one making the most money. We talked about that money thing because I was you like, could look. Be the, 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 making the most money in there. But I, the fact is that he knows his position. Yes. And, and you know, it. and you let him be the man. Mm -hmm. And you let him be a Let's man. forget the man. I let him play his position as what he is. Okay. You know what I'm saying? As a man, a god, or whatever you want to say. Whatever you, you know what I'm saying? Whatever but you a lot of people are so busy these days Again. trying to castrate our men that it's like damn Again. what's going on and you have to listen to every yeah. single thing that we say mm -hmm. it, it, it it it's like it's a negative put to it as soon as you say, as soon as like just when I just said, yeah. let him be the man, you're like, forget him to be the man. No, but what I'm saying is, saying you see what I'm saying? I was saying that for, but I understand what but, you mean. But it, it's it's how it's portrayed. Yeah. And if we can get back to the understanding that look, it's man or mm -hmm. it's husband or wife yes. or you know king and queen, yes. and you guys come together as one, yeah. not individually, but as one. Yeah. Then you can actually rule your kingdom. The reason I said let him be who. Because there's this there's this concept like yo the man the man gotta be hard you that's gotta be saying. busy and I don't like the way that's been pushed on y'all because guess what our men okay have been beaten down by being so hard and so this and so that that they can't even be emotional, emotional. you see what I'm saying so it wasn't saying that let trying to take yeah, no, the I, man I, I, I away what you're no but it, I wanted people with the audience to really yeah. understand that like I am not trying to catch with nobody right. it's just the fact that I love our black men so yeah. much that. Hey, that be a man, be a man, you know, grow up, man up, and all that stuff. That has actually done such a disservice. But we about to take a break. <laughs> what time is it? It's forty. Okay, no, we still got a minute. But yeah, it's like you know they've been trying to castrate y'all for so long that hey, y'all can't even maneuver in this world without somebody feeling some type of way about you as a black man. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm glad you had that perspective though. So. This is um, Goddess Talk on In Touch News. We'll be right back. Um, if you want to call us, 813-444-9588. Call us. Thank you. This, who called me from Jersey at this hour? This is why I always have my Do Not Disturb on because people be doing the most. I tell you, man, the topics, the topics getting juicy. No, but it's good topics. No, it is. And it, it has to be, you know, said. You know, I'm yeah. just listening to all these... Uh, oh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, here you go. I was trying not to get up. I pulled my mic over because I was going to come I was waiting for the mic to come out. I was waiting for the mic to come out. Well, I was scared. Y'all with y'all whip with snapples. I didn't want to come in there with those y'all whip with snapples. I'm going to let y'all be okay. No, but what's your take on it? What's your take on it? Well, you said something about uh, a 
about you know growing up differently and things being different. Mm -hmm. but it's it's not things are not any different. It really are. It's, it's it's all the same. Ain't nothing more than the sun. Uh, Women things change and what they seem to say. Absolutely. And as you get older, like you said, as you get older, you get to understand what your role mm -hmm. is, uh, not what society trains your role to be. And of course, like I said, the European standard has been what people in our community trying to live up to, and that's not it. We as a people were free to do as we chose, and we had better societies before yeah. they basically came through. Yeah, uh, I think the thing that is, is uh, uh, broken up a lot of our families, or at least uh, prevented younger families from, from, from coming together. Mm -hmm. Is um, the uh, the strong black uh, and the, the emancipation of the, black the strong man, man yeah. the strong black man? Because you try to castrate them. You said that no, we don't need these. You know, we don't need the man in the house. But again, who did that? Who created that? Yeah. You know, strong black woman. Who created that? You don't need the man. <clears throat> They did because guess what? What they were doing? They're giving people food stands. They, oh, you can't have this if you well, have a man well, in the house. Well, I mean, we had a lot of strength back in the day. Uh, and they, they put us in jail. Yeah, they started locking us up. Yeah. Hey, y'all. This is Goddess Talk with Balaji. <laughs> Melvin. Melvin photos. You, Melvin Duncan photos. All right, Melvin. Uh, shout out to your business. You've been doing that for a good, strong nine years. Nine Alright, and you've run it. Well, you were just talking about you're going to be in New York here, and then so you, yeah. you travel with your business. It's not just I, I local. I try to. I try to. I mean, right. um, I, I want to get all over the world. Shoot. You know what I'm saying? I want to go to Greece. That was going to be the videographer for our event coming up in December. Yeah. He's going to be um, Gods and Angels uh, videographer for that. I can't wait yeah. for those videos because yeah. I'm already excited for December. Like, yo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm so excited. It's my birthday month. So hey. So I'm not you a Sag or you a Capricorn? Sad, hey, sad, what up? What up? Sad, <laughs> That's always cool. Aries and Sag really yeah. cool. All right, so our next thing that we were talking about that day, all right, um, self sabotage. Actually, we did talk about that. I think yeah, we talked vaguely. about it a little vaguely. Yeah. But the reason I wanted to talk about that, my friend was like, yeah, you should talk about that because you just do that all the time. Oh, she, <laughs> she, called, she called me out. She called me out. And I do like that because when you have real, That's real true. friends. Real talk. They will call you out for your stuff. Yeah. And I'm talking about male and female friends will, will call me out this whole weekend. Yeah. And I really, I truly love every single one of them because I like to look inside at a lot of different things. And when you don't realize what your upbringing may have done to you um, as an adult, you start like, damn, I do do this because of these yeah. issues that I had as a kid or supposedly with yeah. school and coming to a new country and feeling some type of way. So, what do you feel? What does self sabotage mean to you? Mm. <clears throat> well, self sabotage for me is like me putting myself in a position where, you know, literally I shoot myself in the foot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I do many different things that I can, you know, regret doing, mm. you know, or it can backfire on me. Okay. You know? Do you feel like when, because uh, you're dating right now, right? Um, right? No? Uh, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. <That is> okay. <laughs> but when it comes to self sabotage within a relationship, That's right? Self sabotage, right there. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, no. yeah. Sorry. But within relationships, do you feel as men that you open yourself up emotionally where you don't self sabotage, or do you feel like you actually do that because you have become emotionally unavailable within your relationships? That's a lot of words. Okay, so within relationships, do you feel like a lot of men are emotionally available to their women? In a sense, can be. Okay. I can only speak for myself. Mm -hmm. um, if the space is created for you. The space is created, yes. Okay. Actually. I mean, a lot of men can. Do they? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe they shut down for whatever reason. Okay. Maybe they can't get their point across mm -hmm. to their lady. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they are open so much mm -hmm. that you and your own little world. So Beautiful. when it's time to actually really get things across, he's like, forget it. Yeah. I'm not dealing with you no more because yeah. I tried and you're innocent. Okay. So, you know, it just, it really kind of depends. Okay. You know what I mean? So, so let's talk about that. What, 
spaces because I always want to again for the man like how do we create better spaces for you guys to just be emotional to discuss what you would like to like what what can a woman do for y'all like what what can she create for y'all to make it a better union again uh, it, it really depends on the situation it, it, it's not it's, it's, not, not, for it's not one for everything everybody, everybody. everybody. Because okay. <clears throat> what might be what right for somebody else mm -hmm. in today's society mm -hmm. may not be right for someone that somewhere else you know somewhere else exactly i think personally mm -hmm. if the, not only the space is basically created but having an having an open ended relationship mm -hmm. meaning that you guys can talk about anything and everything yeah you know if you guys have communication that's key mm -hmm. you know you have to be able to talk to her she has to be able to talk to you you guys have to be able to bring things to the table yeah and deal with it whether it's 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 something that would be detrimental to you or yeah. not you deal with those struggles, you deal with those issues, you, you put it on the table. And I, I can, again, I can only talk for my, my marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was it was tough. Mm -hmm. It was tough because there was a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. However, you know, there were things that I could have done better mm -hmm. as a man. Mm -hmm. I can only talk for myself. Yeah. I could have done better. I could have listened. Mm -hmm. I could have, you know, put myself out there and said, you know what? Let me be quiet mm -hmm. and not say anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you didn't have to say nothing. Yeah. You could just listen to Silence. the air. Yeah. You know? But people want to be right all the time. Mm -hmm. You know? So they want to get their point across. That's it. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever they say, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. It's yeah. right. But if you actually say to yourself, well, let me just take the time to listen to mm -hmm. you. Go ahead, babe. Mm -hmm. yeah, say, say what you got to say. I think that, to me, you know, for a woman to look at a man and be like, that's the most sexiest thing ever. It is because you know I was saying? like, "Oh, he gonna listen, right. okay." You know but now saying? for her to listen mm -hmm. and be quiet right. and to comprehend and actually retain the information, because it's like we have to understand also, because it can't always be one sided, right? right? Um, do you think it takes uh, learning to be single before you're in a relationship? Because a lot of people don't even know how to have those qualities themselves before they're together. I think. It's not. It's not a practice, and mm -hmm. I, I hate when people put those categories mm -hmm. in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like you have to do this by this. Mm -hmm. You, you got to be single. To, uh, listen. No, no, no. Yeah. Listen. I feel when you in a relationship, mm -hmm. it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. So you got to build on that relationship. Mm -hmm. Just like you have a business relationship, yeah. you got to build on that business mm -hmm. relationship. There are things that are going to come at you, and you got to make a decision. Yeah. Yes. Should I take it? Yes. Or, or yeah, no, yeah. I shouldn't take it. The same thing with a relationship mm -hmm. in a marriage. You have to build on it. It doesn't just come. It's nothing that you could practice now yeah. that would be okay, effective and yeah. uh, prepared for that okay. because it's different. Okay. That's why they have. Let's go back to the mothers of the church. Mm -hmm. You go and you talk to the mothers. They're supposed to guide you. Mm -hmm. Look, baby. Look, you know, such and such and say, go back to your husband mm -hmm. to talk to him. Mm -hmm. But instead, you ain't got that. I feel you like know, everybody's trying to talk about their relationship to social to talk, media. Exactly, and, and, and they put it all on the, on the, on the web. And then everybody in the business. So now you have different people giving you yeah. different responses yeah. that you really don't need to. Don't need you need to actually have guidance yeah. to basically do that. But yeah. again, it's between you and your man, like yeah. you and, and your partner. Yeah. You know your partner. You cannot basically sit there and say, okay, well, oh, I'm going to, you know, um, 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 listen to, you know, Joe Schmo yeah. from, you know, across the, the lake, yeah. and, and he don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Or she don't even know what's going uh -huh. on. You know, just because you put your, your opinion out yeah. there on, on, on Facebook and, and whatever they, they say, you listen to yeah. that's, that's not cool. That's, it's really not. Because it's, that was the thing, you know, subliminal messages and writing little things and posting little songs to try to get back at your ex and it's like, or yeah. whatever. And it's like, yo, once I start seeing that stuff, I'm like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. So, you know, like, yeah. because it's, it's, if you have an issue with somebody, you need to literally face to face discuss it with the person yeah. so that both of y'all can find some kind of middle ground. Even if your differences and opinion are still the same, yeah. you still had a discussion. Right. And you came with um, basically, I think almost submissively to each other, like, look, I'm humbly like, let's let's discuss this and let's work from this. Because if you don't, look, it could definitely spiral out of control. Sure okay. So Melvin, shout out your business and um Anything else you would like to? Uh, we are coming to end. Up, yeah. Up. Okay. Again, if y'all want to check me out, love love photos on Instagram or Facebook. Let me check that out. Okay, that's my actual page. Yeah. Uh, if you want to actually uh, book a session, you know you can do that as Book well. it. 
Um, you know, you guys are gonna enjoy it. Yeah. I tell you, every shoot that I do is, is one to remember. He play a song for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma and um, uh, don't forget to get uh, Tenacious Studios. Um, and uh, when my magazine drops, you can definitely check that out too. Fox Magazine. Okay. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to end it with um, letting y'all know about what we're bringing to Tampa Bay. We are bringing Gods and Angels uh, Gala to Tampa Bay, where Melvin is going to actually be the videographer. We have so many different things coming. We have a harpist from New York coming. We have a guy who does the uh, pan drums. He's from Orlando. We have some dancers from Tampa. Um, we have these two artists coming from D.C. and Philly. Um, Blue Robin and Art Testimony, and they have a collection together. And basically, art is being sold that night. So this really is a nice. black tie um, yeah, gala. Please. Okay, you so dress up. you gotta dress I'm up. Cool. And I'm gonna sit, sit the theme, I guess. But I'm you, gonna do it all black. You gonna, yeah. gonna I appreciate black it. sneakers and black pants. Okay, <laughs> the black tie. But the thing is, you know, think about what the Met Gala is, right? You're dressing up for the theme, so you can definitely come in costume if you would like to. Yeah. I have my ensemble coming together, <laughs> but um, the theme is all about um, moving from loss and um, just devastation to love. So. And so that's what's coming to Tampa. You can get the tickets on um, Eventbrite, but uh, you know, tickets are going. And we have sponsorship available. We have, you know, VIP seats, and then we have regular seats. Yeah. But you know, we'll be drinking. <laughs> we'll be eating, and we'll have, um, we'll have all that entertainment. So it's just a good, fun vibe, and that's what I'm basically bringing to Tampa. Yeah. So check out Gods and Angels. Uh, you can find it on Facebook. Um, we have an event page for that as well. But you can go on Eventbrite and get your tickets. Um, but it's going to be a great experience. This is for us. It's a melanated, okay? So this is for Black folk. All of us melanated across the diaspora. <laughs> if you're in Tampa Bay, you need to show up. You know, yeah. come in, dress to impress, to and success. party. We're, we're gonna have a blue wall, um, a blue carpet, so we're gonna be walking through. You know, I'm gonna give them experience, and we got the videographer right aye, here. Aye. So you already know it's gonna be nice and classy. <clears throat> but you know, this is Goddess Talk. Uh, this is Balaji, and we'll see you next week on In Touch News at 7 p.m. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great evening. Bless up. Sure.